Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this new video. Today we're going to talk about WireGuard configuration on the UDM SE. As you can see, I'm not home. I'm not in my studio. I am remote today. I am in Montreal for a family visit slash vacation. And I'm going to show you how I do to connect to my home network. If you are new to the channel, my name is Guy and here on KB Trainings, I share with you most of my IT project, what I know and what I'm learning in the tech field. So if you like these kind of videos, subscribe to the channel and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Why do I need to connect to my home? network because I need to access some resources internally like my Windows desktop which is my main workstation I have a lot of things on there or my NAS for example I installed a Synology NAS I showed you a video and I want to access the data for video editing or just to copy stuff so I need to create a VPN to my home network first of all what is a VPN VPN stands for virtual private network it's just a tunnel that you create to your local lane for example, my home network is a LAN or a local area network. And then we have the internet, which is the public network or WAN. And then here I live at my uncle's house. It's a private LAN as well. So if I want to access things that are in my personal LAN or my home LAN, I need to create a tunnel between this LAN and my home LAN. And that tunnel is the actual VPN. It goes through the public internet and connects me to my resources internally. It needs to be secured and encrypted to make sure that nobody else has access to my home network. So with the UDM SE, we have two options for VPN. We have L2TP or layer two tunneling protocol and we have WireGuard, which is a newer option that was released lately with an update. The thing I like about WireGuard is that it's fast and it's very simple to use. L2TP is also good. I've been using it for a while before WireGuard, but it's much slower than WireGuard. Let's try it here. So I'm not connected to the VPN. Let me connect with L2TP and I'm going to show you what the speed looks like. My download speed is 21 megabit per second and my upload is 37. So now let's do a test speed with WireGuard. So I'm going to connect using WireGuard and we'll see what the speed is. And I usually have my prompt here available to show me that I'm connected. Yes, I'm connected internally. And I use the DNS to resolve the IP. As you can see, NAS.local is my local NAS and I can ping it from here. So let's do a test again. So as you can see here, WireGuard is way faster than L2TP. WireGuard is just a VPN protocol. It's much faster and secure. And as you're going to see, it's also much simpler to configure. I was having trouble configuring L2TP on an Android device, but with WireGuard, it works very easily on Android, Macs, iPhones, or iPad, whatever you have. It's even faster and newer than OpenVPN. And if I go on Google and do what's my IP, this is my home IP because I'm connected to the VPN. All my traffic from this MacBook goes through the tunnel and exit to my home network. And if I shut down the VPN, this IP is going to change. If I deactivate the VPN, and refresh this. Now I have an IP ending in 208.16. This is my local IP here in Montreal. So let me show you how to configure WireGuard. To do that, I need to be connected to my home network. So I need to enable this and go in my UDM SE. This works with UDM SE, the UDM Pro, or any other unified device that you have that supports WireGuard. When you are on the UDM SE, you go under settings and teleport and VPN. So here we have my two tunnels that I have. As you can see, we have one client connected on each tunnel. So what I need to do to create a new WireGuard tunnel, for example, is to go under create VPN server and then fill out the name of the tunnel that I want to create or the name of the VPN. And automatically I have a private key and a public key. And then I need to define what is the IP I want to use. I have WAN1 and WAN2 for primary and backup. Here it's connected to WAN1 and then I need to give it a port. The default port for WireGuard is 51820. Before adding clients, I can go down here to set up some advanced options. I can go and define what is the subnet I want to use for my remote client. Here it's 192.168.3.1. This is going to be the default gateway, but the full table is here. These are going to be the IPs for my devices. And then I can enable name server as well. I'm going to give it 10.32.0.2, which is my local DNS. And then for the second DNS, I will just use the Google DNS. And then I can add client here by doing add new. And me, I go with the devices that I have. You may 
go with the users for example so you create a file or you create a new configuration for each user me i'm creating a configuration for each device that i have so here i can say s23 which is my phone that i have over here and i will just say create user and after that i will hit apply changes to create that but i already have my tunnel created over here i'm going to leave so i already have a wire guard created here i named it wire has everything and i have two clients the s23 and the mpb or macbook pro that i have on here and everything stays the same so when you're creating a new client you need to download the file this file is going to be the configuration file that you're going to use with WireGuard application on your remote user. So when I add a new client, let's say iPhone, for example, I can go and download the profile, save this file somewhere, and then find a way to bring this file to my remote client or my remote device. I can send it by email. I can upload it on Google Drive and go download it on that device. Use any kind of sharing method to make sure the client get this file. And then I'm going to show you how the client will be able to connect. Let's use my phone as an example. The first thing you have to do is to make sure that you have WireGuard downloaded. If you go on the Play Store, just search for WireGuard and you can download the application. When you open the application, make sure here I have the tunnel enabled. Let me disable the tunnel. So make sure you have your file, the configuration file somewhere on your phone. What you have to do is go on plus and find the file, whatever it is, and you're going to have the file loaded on your application. And once you have it, it's going to look like this and just hit that and you'll be able to connect to your VPN. We can test that by using the IP tools application. As you can see, my public IP is my Denver's IP. And I can go under ping and try to ping 10.35.0.2 and I can ping it without any problem because I'm connected to the VPN and that's how you do it. So now that I have remote access to my network, I need to think of security. I need to make sure that not everything is going to be possible between the remote access VPN and my home network. Because by default, when I create a VPN like this, I am able to access all the local area networks or all the different VLANs that are inside my network. So that's why the first thing I have to do is go under firewall and security, create this rule here. This is the rule that is going to block all remote access as you can see in the description. This rule is going to filter the traffic coming from the remote access users going into my home network and block everything that was not specifically allowed above it. So what I need to create this is first to create the objects that I need to manipulate. You need to go under profile and scroll down to port slash IP groups. Here I created some objects like the first one is all lens. This object is identifying all the local area networks I have. As you can see here, I have tan.0.0.0 slash 8. This is going to cover all the local area networks I have in my network here. And I also have some other objects that are identifying specific device. Like this one is identifying my desktop device. As you can see, 10.35.0.9. So if you want to add a new profile here, you just need to go and hit on create new port slash IP group and then give it a name and here you can identify what type of object you're creating you can create an ipv4 address or subnet and then here i do 192.168.0.0/16 to identify everything coming from my vpn connections and when i do add and hit apply changes i'm going to create an object but i already have something created here and i called it vpn lan this identifies everything coming from the remote access users so what i have to do is go under firewall and security so first thing is that i want to block everything coming from the so i created the rule here under lan and the rule is right there so if i open it it's the type lan out because it's coming from my remote access on the outside which is still considered as a LAN or LAN interface. So the description is block all remote and it's going to be applied before predefined rules. And the action is to drop everything, IPv4 protocol, all kind of protocols. And the source, I'm going to identify this as a port slash group IP. And I'm going to select VPN LAN because that is the object I created to identify all the remote users. 
and then under destination i'm going to select all lens so everything going to my internal lens will be dropped and then once i save this rule it's going to be added here right now it's disabled that's why i'm able to ping but if i come here and enable this rule look at this if i enable the rule i will not be able to ping this device here so this is just for security reasons and then from here i can add some more rules on top of it or before it to make sure that everything is specified like this one is for the dns server and i know the ip that i'm pinging here is my dns ip which is 10.35.0.2 right now i'm not able to ping it but because i have a rule right here that i can enable to a lot of traffic going to the dns server i'm just going to enable it since it's already created or if i didn't have it i was going to create one to be able to allow the traffic so as you can see here i'm able to ping so that's why i have a couple of rules here this one is um, allowing access to the remote desktop this one that i have the windows so i have that right here and i have another rule to allow access to the nas uh, let's say if i come here and i try to ping nas.local it's going to resolve the ip because i do have access to the vpn but it's not going to ping because we don't have the rule enabled. So if I go in the firewall and I enable the NAS rule, you can see that I will be able to ping from here. All right, so now the pings are fine. So make sure you have all the rules in place. You don't have a lot of vulnerability to your network. So make sure you block everything that you don't want to get access to your network, even though being on the VPN is already secure, but you need to make sure that not everybody that is accessing remote can have access to everything. You need to specify what the remote users can have access to. All right, guys, that's all I can do for now. I'm remote, so I cannot really mess with my VPN right now. Otherwise, I'm going to be locked out. So if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment. I'll be glad to respond. And if you want to become good in networking, I have a CCNA course on kbtrains.com. The course is in French and English, it goes from zero to engineer. It will teach you all the networking basic that you need to know to start or boost your career in this field. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm not tweeting as much, but I'll try to do my best. You can also mention me on your tweets. I'll be glad to see that. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye.